Now let's move on to maybe the more complicated part of this math chapter, and that is the Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to take all of our information about these number relationships with perfect squares and square roots. We're going to apply that to triangles and only a specific type of triangle because Pythagorean theorem only, only applies to 90 degrees or right angle triangles. So let's just check out what the different parts of this triangle are called. I've got two leg sides of a triangle. So my two legs I'm going to call leg A and leg B. My other side of the triangle is the diagonal that connects those two legs and it's opposite the 90 degree angle. That's called the hypotenuse and we also label that side C on our triangle. And the hypotenuse is always the longest side. Mathematically it has to be the longest side. So now that we've got some terminology, let's go ahead and try and solve a Pythagorean theorem triangle. Alright, so I've got an example triangle set up. We've got a right angle triangle, leg A is 4, leg B is 3, and hypotenuse C, we're missing, we're going to calculate that. So what I'm going to do here is just use some of the skills we've worked on so far this unit. I'm going to take side A and literally I'm going to make a square out of side A. So there's a square, and what I'm going to do is just label that as A squared, because that's really what we've done, we've made a square out of it. Now what we've learned earlier in the unit is to square a number means to times it by itself. So a squared is going to be, well, side length a is 4, so it will be 4 multiplied by 4. And the answer to that is that a squared is equal to 16. We'll do the same to side b. We'll literally make a square out of side b. Here we go. And I'll call this b squared. And again, b squared is going to be equal this time to 3 multiplied by 3. And b squared is equal to 9. Okay, so now we've got two squares. And we're going to look for a relationship between side a squared, side b squared, and side c squared. Now side c squared is a little bit difficult because I don't have graph, pi graph paper or grid lines that I can follow to count because it's on a diagonal. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to take single cubes and just apply those to side a and side b squared. Side a squared is equal to 't might be able to make a prediction about what's going to happen here as I move in my last four squares. So I've got all of my green squares from side A, all of my pink squares from side B, and what you can see is that when I combine all the squares from side A and all the squares from side B, I actually get how many squares there are inside C. And that's something really cool and really important. That is the essence of the Pythagorean theorem. The fact that if we square side A and we square side B and add them together, what we get is the square of side C. So 16 plus 9 equals, in this case, 25. So you can see if I counted all these up, it would be 5 by 5. So side C squared is equal to 25. Well, in this case, it is 16 from a squared plus 9 from b squared. And then when I add those together, c squared is equal to 
So basically what I've just found here is that c squared has an area of 25 squares, and I know that from counting the squares. But my original question wasn't the area. It was to find the side length, how long the hypotenuse is, or side c. So having c squared isn't really finishing the question. I've got to do one more step. If you think back to way at the start of this chapter, we learned how to take the area of a square, which in this case is 25, and work our way backwards and find the side length. The way that we did that was by using the square root. So here we go. My last step in any of these questions is going to be to take the square root of c squared. So if I take the square root of 25, what I wind up with is c is equal to 5. And that's the answer that I'm looking for. So right here, what we've got is the Pythagorean theorem has shown us that a squared plus b squared is c squared, and in this case, 16 plus 9 equals 25. Take the square root of that. That means that the side length of c is 5. So I can take my question mark and just replace that with a 5. So let's go ahead and do a couple of practice questions here using the document camera because it'll be a little bit easier for us. So I'll turn it on. Here we go. Six units by eight units. We're going to try and find out what that hypotenuse is. So let's go ahead and label those 6, 8, this is side A, this is side B, and our hypotenuse is side C. We don't know what side C is, so I'll put a question mark there. What we're going to do here is literally make squares out of these. So I'll make this one 6 by 6. And I'll make the bottom one. 8 by 8, and I'll try to make the best square that I can out of side C. I know it's not going to be perfect, but I'll make an attempt, something like that for side C. So if we square side A, this is going to be A squared is equal to 6 multiplied by 6 a squared is equal to 36. For side b, b squared is equal to 8 times 8. b squared is equal to 64. Then side c squared is equal to, well, a squared plus b squared. Where do you know what both of those values are? a squared is 36, and b squared is 64. When I add those together, 36 plus 64, that answer is 100. So that means the area of that square that I've just drawn there is 100 units. It could be 100 centimeters squared, 100 meters squared, whatever unit of measurement you're using. So if the area of this is 100, we'll call it centimeters squared, I need to take the square root of that in order to find the side lengths of those squares. And it just so happens that one of those side lengths lines up perfectly with the hypotenuse of my triangle. If I take the square root of 100, we should all know that c is equal to 10. So there we go. That's another way of showing that we understand Pythagorean's theorem. Let's do one more. This time I'm going to use one that doesn't work out with whole numbers. So everything we've done so far, the first triangle we worked on with sides of 3, 4, and 5, and this one that is sides 6, 8, and 10, we call those Pythagorean triples because they are right angle triangles and they're whole numbers on all three sides. Not every triangle you do is going to be a right angle triangle, so we'll have to use a calculator to help us a little bit with some of these questions. So let's go ahead here and try one more of these. And this time I'm going to make this triangle 7 units by 2 units. Try and connect that as neatly as possible. So this is 2, this is 7. And again, I'll call this side A, side B, side C. What I'm looking to find is side C, or that hypotenuse. So again, I can literally make a square out of side A, side B, and side C. So 2, 4, 5, 
four, six, seven. There we go. And two. Now I don't know how big side C is, so I'll just do my best to draw it. Something like that. Again, doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a visualization. So here we go. Side A squared is equal to seven times seven. A squared then is 49. Side B squared is equal to two multiplied by two. Side B squared is equal to four. Then we know from Pythagorean theorem that side C squared is equal to side A squared plus side B squared. So side C squared is equal to, well, 49 plus four. Side C squared is equal to 53. And then finally, if I know the area is 53 of the square on side C, I need to take the square root of that to find its side length. And I'll get my old calculator out. Square root 53 is equal to 7.3 that we're up to. So I know this length of the hypotenuse is 7.3. Excellent. So there we have it. We've got a few examples here of using Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse side of a triangle. All right, let's do another example, and this time I'm going to be given the hypotenuse and I'm going to try and find one of the side lengths. So let's just see our triangle looks like so. And maybe here, and there, we'll just say this is a right angle triangle even though it might not look like it. We'll say that our hypotenuse is 9 in this case, that's side C. I'm going to try and figure out what side A is. I don't know what it is. And let's just say side C is 2.5. We're going to make all these centimeters this time. So, like we've been doing before, we're going to literally square these numbers. So if I take 2.5 and square it, okay, that will be, and this is side B by the way, side B squared equals 2.5 times 2.5. B squared equals, well, in a calculator, 2.5 squared is 6.25 and if I do the same to side A, so I'm going to literally make a square out of this, again I don't know what that is but I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure it out. So side C, well C squared in this case I just know it's 9 times 9, C squared equals 81. Now before we were adding together side a squared and b squared to get c squared. But it also stands to reason that if this square plus this square equals this square, then the larger square subtract either one of these two squares should equal the other one. So in this case, we're not going to go a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We're going to go a squared is equal to c squared subtract b squared. This square subtract this square, and we're talking about the areas of each. So, side A squared is equal to, well, C squared, we found the area was 81 centimeters. Subtract 6.25 centimeters, which was side B squared. And we find that side A squared is equal to 74, that's not right. Yes, it is. 74.75 centimeters squared. Now, that's the area. That's how big the square is next to side A. However, we're not looking for A squared. What we're looking for is A. So again, our last step is to find the side length of that square. We do that by taking the square root of A squared. So the square root of a squared is 8.6 or around 2. So a equals 8.6 centimeters. So we know that this side length is equal to 8.6 centimeters. So there we go. I believe we're right. We can always check by working backwards. But if you see here, again, our hypotenuse is still the longest side. So if you ever calculate a leg length and it comes out bigger than the hypotenuse, you'll know you've made a mistake somewhere because that simply can't happen. That wraps up the 